Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I want to talk to you tonight about, I mean, we, 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 do, we do a service called Ignite. And I want to speak to every single heart that is sitting in here because life will do a number on you in various ways. It will cause havoc in your heart when you lose people you love. Well, we didn't lose them. We know where they're at, but it hurts. Uh, We go through challenges in life, in business, in in our workplace, uh, family and, and it's easy to grow weary while well-doing. And, and though you're a good Christian and you go to church and you worship God and we have a shout and a praise, you know, we're still human. And you go through things in life that, that really they just come to, to steal your peace and your joy. And so I want to talk tonight about how do you, how do you overcome and, and how do you keep the, the, the momentum of your spiritual walk with God, how do you stay fresh? How do you stay uh, vibrant and alive when, when things don't seem to be going the way you, you want them to go? When, when life is, is constantly beating you up, what do you do? How do you handle that? Um, it's, it's almost like, like God, he keeps speaking to the church. There's this wave of blessing, but it's almost like we believe more in the struggle than we believe in the one who overcomes all the struggles for us. And, and so I pray that tonight that I can just shake us up just a little bit. And that we can walk out of here tonight just waking up a little bit more and saying, man, I got to shake some stuff off my life. I got to shake off whatever attitude, whatever funk I have on me right now. Because let me tell you something. Uh, God says, I want you to be a sweet smelling aroma in my presence. And uh, you know what? There's no room for stench. Yeah? And sometimes life is a stench. But that doesn't mean that we have to stay there forever. You may go through the stench, but you're not going to live there. You're not going to camp there. And so what do we do? I want to start with a verse in Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. And I want you all to just get in your word with me tonight. And, uh, hey, worship team, do me a favor. Would y'all just come sit over here for me on the right side? Because I need to see your beautiful faces. Thank you guys so much. There's all this rose over here to the right side. Joel chapter 2, are you guys there? Joel chapter 2. In verse 28 through 30, I want to show you something because I know that we've all read this verse, but I want to I open your horizon just a little bit more tonight. It says this. I would say, after that. After that, after what? After so many things. If you read the, 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 the previous verses, God starts talking about how he's going to scatter everybody for the sake of you. I mean, he, and then after that, he still wants more for you. It's amazing how he wants to get your victory. He is your victory. He wants to be your breakthrough. He is your breakthrough. And he begins to talk about all these things that he's going to do to the enemy who's been messing with you. And he says, and after all that, now here's what I'm going to do for you. It's like, you've already done enough, God. You're awesome. We sang this song, I want more. I want more. It's so funny how we sing it, but then we don't want more. The Holy Spirit is more. (laughs) He's more. And you know what? Once you get the Holy Spirit, there's more. There's more. Why do we get so stuffy? Because we stop hungering for more. Why do we get so weird? Because we stop hungering for more. We become so earthly minded that we become spiritually no good. You can become so earthly minded, so life oriented, so so comfortable and casual that we coexist with the issues of life, with the drama of life, and we just kind of, we just kind of throw our hands up like, well, that's, it is what it is. No, it doesn't have to be that way. And so here it says, and after that, I will. Everybody say, I will. I Look at that. God says, I'm, I'm going to do it, guys. I will pour out my spirit 
My spirit. So God has the right spirit. God has a righteous spirit. He says, I'm going to pour out my spirit. God wants us to be under the influence of his spirit. So he says, I'm going to pour out. I want more. Okay, fine. I'll pour them out. So pour it out. Okay, fine. He says, I'll pour it out. He says, I will pour out my spirit on some people. I'm sorry, good-looking people. Shh, thank you. All people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aaron. I'll make sure not to mess that one up again. And it says, and your sons and daughters will what? Prophesy. Why does he say prophesy? You know why? Because the greatest prophet of your life is going to be you. The Holy Spirit is in you. He says, and you will prophesy. That means that we have the power to prophesy over our circumstance. Listen to me. We have the power and authority. Everybody say authority. Authority. We have the power and authority to prophesy. Come on, what does prophesy mean? It means that you begin to speak, not just words. You speak powerful words into your future. You can do that. He says, the reason that you can prophesy is because of my spirit. My spirit brings dead people to life. My spirit brings dead dreams to life. Come on, you can have a vision, but a vision without God's breath is dead. You need the breath of God right now. In whatever circumstance you're in, you need his breath. And he says, and I will pour out my spirit on my sons and daughters. They will prophesy. Your old men, look at that. God thinks about the young people, the mid-aged people, the old people. He thinks about it. Your old people. Any old people in this house? <laughs> you ain't looking at no one. Your old men, look at this. Your old men will have what? Dreams. Your young men will have what? Visions. In those days, I will pour out my spirit on those who do what? Serve me. So if you serve God, you are a candidate. You are a candidate for him to pour out his spirit in this day. These are those days. And he says, and men and women alike. Come on. Equal opportunity, guys. It's not just the women who are anointed and double jointed. Come on. So are we. And he says, I will show what? Wonders. Have you ever wondered why you haven't seen many wonders in your life lately? Ask yourself. Like right now, maybe you're wondering, why isn't isn't life, why isn't, why why am I always sad? I wonder why I'm sad. I wonder why um, I'm not progressing. I wonder why I I always have this, this emotional roller coaster life. I wonder why I'm, I'm always having relational problems. I wonder why I'm not seeing the things that, that, that God has promised me fulfilled yet. I wonder why it's taking so long. Have you ever wondered? Well, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit says when he gets, when, when God pours out his spirit, he says, you will see wonders in heaven and here's the beautiful thing, and you will see wonders on earth. God wants to see, wants us to see wonders, wonders, miracles on earth, signs on earth, and wonders, miracles. He wants wonders in our life. And so what, where, where, where's the wonders? Where, where are those things? Well, let's really begin to look at this because if you don't realize that God is the God of your dreams and vision, then you'll always wonder why isn't anything good happening in my life? He's clarifying that he will pour out his spirit and it's by his spirit that you have the ability to dream now. It's by his spirit that you have the ability to have a vision. And so many of us have started strong with God. We started excited, enthusiastic, and we would talk about the dream, man. And we would, we would preach about the vision. And we would tell people, this is what God's going to. But along the way, you kind of just begin to get stale. Why? Because the enemy comes for the dream. He's always going to come. Satan does not have an issue with your 
doctrine. Satan has an issue when you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit who is constantly downloading dreams and vision. He can care less about how much scripture you have memorized. He can care less of how many Bible classes you have taken. He is not threatened by your doctrine. He's threatened when you are influenced and when the Holy Spirit is alive on the inside of you because he knows if the Spirit of God is in you, there will be less funkiness on your life because the Spirit of God is the only one who can bring dead things back to life, including your spirit man. Are you hearing me? So it ain't your doctrine. He's not, he's not, he's not afraid of how much Bible knowledge you have. He's not afraid of how many sermons you listen to on podcasts. He, he doesn't give a rip. He cares about how intimate you are with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit guides, the Holy Spirit leads, the Holy Spirit reveals, and God forsake that you and the Holy Spirit are so hooked and linked up that he reveals to you the dream that God has for your life because now you're a threat. Now you're a threat. Say it with me. God is the God of dreams and vision. When you have no dream, you become, you become very stale. When you have no vision, you become problematic. When you have no dream and you have no vision, you're always focused on the negative. You can never see anything good because you're so consumed with everything that is going wrong that you don't put attention on the things that God wants to do right in your life. And so the enemy, he comes for your dreams. But we also have to come to the truth, guys, that we have ignored that the Holy Spirit gives those dreams. We have ignored that the Holy Spirit gives that vision. We have ignored that the Holy Spirit gives you future the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us a future. That's why when he says prophesy, prophecy, it, it, it pertains to things that are ahead. Prophecy. Do you know that you can prophesy to your own future? You can, you have the authority, you can speak things into existence. As long as it lines up with God's word, you can do it. What if we were to just be like, like, let's say you need a job. Let's, say, let's just say you need a job. What if you started, instead of focusing on the job you don't have, what if you just started prophesying over the job that you want to have? And you just started proclaiming it like you knew. See, it's not just knowing that you have authority to prophesy. It's knowing the identity that you have of the one who provides the prophetic words that will bring life to that, that situation. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta get the revelation again. He is the hope. When, what's a, what's a great uh, indication that you are no longer intimate with the Holy Spirit? What would that be? Let me tell you what it is. When you're no longer dreaming, that is a great indication that you have intimate issues with the Holy Spirit. When you're no longer having vision anymore for your life, for your family, for uh, your career, you're, you're dying. When you're no longer excited about seeing people come to Jesus, when you're no longer excited about sharing your story, that is a great indication that you and the Holy Spirit, you're no longer linked up the way you used to be. Think about it. When you receive Jesus, you receive his spirit. And his spirit begins to regenerate all the dead things in your life. And then God begins to bring back the things that he originally placed in you. All the potential, all the gifts, the talents. He begins to sanctify it and use it for his glory. But when you have stopped being intimate with the Holy Spirit, you know the Holy Spirit, but you're not intimate with him. You know him. I know that already. But one thing to know it. The other thing is to live him. There's a whole Another level when it comes to intimately knowing. But a great indicator of that is, is when you no longer dream anymore. You're just cruising. You're casual. There's no excitement of anything. That's a dangerous place to be. And you know why? Because when you do that, you start getting sloppy. You get lazy. 
Huh? You oversleep. You overeat. Am I talking to someone? You get so casual, you let yourself go. You do. You let yourself go in every possible way you can think of. You let yourself go in, in, in your excellence. You let yourself go in, in your pride, in the sense of my pride in my God who is, he's awesome. You, you let go of things that you once uh, held dear as value, like the value of your faith, the value of passion, the value of seeing things that you've been believing for. Remember when you used to believe God for that, that you, you had a one-bedroom apartment, and you're like, I'm going to believe God for two bedrooms. Glory to Jesus. Yay. And, you, and then God did it, and you're like, oh, my God, we're in two bedrooms. And, and you got so comfortable that now you don't even believe for any bedrooms. Why? Because you're too busy sleeping in it. Huh? You're believing God, God, I want to own my own property. You believe God for a condo, a, a townhome. You get in and you're like, yes, next is the house. But then life came in and now you have no vision even for a house. Now, I know those are practical things. Those are, those are physical tangibles. But I'm talking about what is the dream? What is the dream of God for your life? What is that dream? Because the only way to get the dream is only through God. Think about it. Elevate Kids Global began with walking in Oaxaca, Mexico. And then God said to me, by the Spirit, build me a school. It's like, what? (laughs) Say what? Why? Because when you're intimate with the Holy Spirit, he has access to your ears. When you're not intimate with the Holy Spirit, you no longer listen to anything the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life or through your life. We're so consumed with, I don't have this. I don't have that. I'm not this. I'm not that. You, you're, so, you're trying to get an identity in Christ, but you can't get one when you're so focused on who you're not. And so the Holy Spirit is trying. So, so this is pretty cool too, guys. Check this out. I should have brought I forgot to give it to media. This sucks. But anyways, so, so we're in Oaxaca. God says, build me a school. Man, now everybody say dream. dream. That was God's dream. Now listen, even though that was God's dream, man, I am satisfied in his dream. I'm enjoying his dream. And of course, I can't open this, of course, right when I want to show you something. Hold on for a second. I'm going to do this. Come on, open up, open up. Okay, yeah. Okay, what's going on? Verifying. Sorry, it's just taking forever, this social media stuff. Okay, what the heck is this now? What in the world? Yeah, man, I'm with you. Gloria a Dios, always a problem here. I love technology, but man, I tell you, it tests me. Don't pray for patience. Yes, it's correct. Yes, that's my number. Yes. Of course, every time I want to do something, just as well, praise God. Okay, I need to prophesy victory now. But but check this out. This last week, uh, we got four more children, four more, four more kids, which is awesome. I'll show you the pictures on Sunday. But but check this out. It started with 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 an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit, and then God deposits a dream. And in this dream, as you begin to work with God, as you partner up with God, God begins to reveal the next steps and he begins to bring the right people and he begins to get you connected with the right people that you need to do life with. And before you know it, his dream now, it's like, how in the world did we open? I asked myself, how did we open this school? How do we do that? But you know what? God's just looking for someone who's available that he can start downloading dreams to. But when you're not hooked up with the Holy Ghost, listen to me, you're going to get stale with your own life. And I don't know about you, but my life is boring without him. Right? So if you're bored right now, that's just because you're no longer intimate with the Holy Spirit. That's the only reason. There's no other reason. He says in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, on everything. Every son and daughter and, and my Holy Spirit will give them dreams. And, and he's, so think about it. God is not born because he's always trying to dream with you. He's always looking to dream with the church. The Holy Spirit will speak 
positive things to you. The Holy Spirit, listen, I get it. He, he also brings conviction. But I believe that God, by the Holy Spirit, brings more vision and dreams than always correcting you. I really believe that. Satan already does enough of all that junk making you feel condemned and, and, and you feel guilty and shame and, and condemnation and all those things. Man, the Holy Spirit just wants us to repent, get it right, and let's dream again. That's what he wants. Are you with me today? So the indication of you, is, uh, of you not dreaming anymore, you not having vision, it's simple. You're no longer intimate with the Holy Spirit. That's it. We can fix that tonight, you know? Isn't that good news? Come on, you stop dreaming about the possibilities with God. When you're no longer hooked up with the Holy Spirit, you stop dreaming about the possibility of opening your business. You stop dreaming about the possibility of owning a house. Now, mind you, tangibles, I get it. You stop dreaming of the possibilities that this is the year where you discover the purpose and the plan and the call of God on your life. When you're disconnected from the one who breathes life into the vision and the dream of God, when you're not in cahoots with him, I'm telling you, you get stale, you get funky, you get weird, you start getting bad attitudes, you know what, you, you, stop, you stop liking people, they, they annoy you, and, and all of a sudden you're just at that place like, mm, you're frustrated. Get hooked up with the Holy Ghost and that'll change. Come on, when you are no longer linked up with the Holy Spirit, you immediately forget what it means to sacrifice for God. You don't sacrifice anymore. You, you just cruise, and it's like, it's like we want things from God, but listen, if you're going to go up with God, you're going to have to go down with him first. It's sacrifice. You got to sacrifice your attitude. You have to sacrifice your opinion. You have to sacrifice the fact that it's going to cost a price for you to go where God wants to take you. There is a price to get there. And we all have to pay the price to get there. But you're not alone. The Holy Spirit will help you pay the price. Jesus paid the price. All we have to do is be willing to sacrifice just a little bit more so that we can get what God wants. Let's look at, at a verse here in Matthew 16. Look, we have authority over this stuff guys the Holy Spirit is the key everybody say that the Holy Spirit is the key he is the key he is the key look he's the key to my dream he's the key to my vision he's the key man he holds the key to my joy he holds the key to my vic the Holy Spirit look Matthew 16 verse 19 I'm gonna read this in the NLT um, and we'll start it says and I will look at this Jesus and I will give you the keys of the what? Kingdom of heaven. So check this out. So everything that you need from God is in heaven. You have to start with heaven. He says, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He says, whatever you what? Forbid on this earth will be forbidden in heaven. Wow, that's some pretty serious authority, man. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. That means that you and I right now, you have the key. You have the key to close the door to funky. You have the key to close the door to disappointment. You have the key to close the door to oppression. But you have to Take the authority. For example, all of you right now, y'all have some keys in your pocket. You have the authority to get into your house. You know why? Because I have identified that I live there. And you go there and I can open my door and I can close my door. You can invite people in and you can lock people out. <laughs> Stop saying that, Christian. Jesus, take the will. No, Jesus said, I didn't take the will. I gave you keys. Yeah. Right? Oh, just, I'm just going to sit in the back seat. You, Jesus, take it. And he's like, no, I gave you keys. I gave you authority to start the engine. <laughs> and I gave you identity to know that you have the authority and the power to enter into heaven and begin to withdraw your heavenly account and begin to experience the promises that I have created for you. You have the key to dream again. You have the key to envision again the things that God has for you. I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. 
And whatever you shut the door to on earth will be shut in heaven. What if we understood the revelation of the key that we have in God? The Holy Spirit, he is the key to dream again. He is the key to shake off whatever's on you. Or you can have the key just to stay there. We have that kind of authority on this earth. And God wants us to really understand that, that we have the authority to give permission. If you want joy, open the key to joy. Come on, go to heaven. Lord, I thank you for joy. I mean, think about it. Right now, if you're angry, upset, mad, well, what got you there? You chose to be that. Dang. Okay, you're right. I did choose that. Okay, so what am I going to I'm going to choose joy. I'm just going to start laughing. I'm just going to start being happy. Why are you happy? I don't know, man. I just opened that happy joy, you know, that happy door. I'm just happy. But what's, what's there to be? I don't know. I'm just, you know, I opened the door and boom, man, God just poured out his happiness on me. What if we, honestly, we're spiritual people. What, what if we just tried that? All right, let's just all try that right now. Come on, stand to your feet. Yeah, come on, stop getting funky on me. Come on. Just grab, grab your spiritual key. All right, ready? All right, here we go. Okay, grab your keys if you like. Okay, if that makes you feel better, whatever you want, make noise. All right, ready? Come on, go to heaven. Come on. Turn the key. And now just let joy come in. Just start laughing. <laughs> come on, more joy. <laughs> come on, some of you, your face needs it. You will lose wrinkles if you start just laughing again. Come on, you don't need Botox. You need laughter. Come on. <laughs> Seriously, like, let's just laugh. It's just, ah, praise God. Wow. Okay. And listen, and you don't have to be spiritual pooky. Pooky. <laughs> Spooky. Close the door when you're done. Praise God. Amen? Yeah. It's, 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 it's a choice. I, I just opened the door to happiness. Why are you happy? Because... I got authority to be happy. And because I don't define myself based on my circumstance, I identify with who I am in Jesus. Let's open that door again. Come on, ready? One, two, three. Open it. <laughs> Come on, amen. All right, have a seat. Come on, so we need to rebuke. Come on, rebuke that funk. And let's get the spirit of joy back in our life. God has the key to my dream. He wants us to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Let me give you a few more verses. Look at this. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Man, this, this king was just dark, man. He was evil. Uh, but let me tell you something. You, you have the influence of the Holy Spirit to be the answer to the company you work for. You, do you know that in the company you work for, you can give them some heavenly ideas and all of a sudden they're going to be like, man, you know what? You got to go talk to Steve because, man, when Steve opens his mouth, man, he always has amazing ideas and he makes our company better. And you know what happens? You have the favor of God on your life. Look at this. So Nebuchadnezzar, he's ticked off. Well, you know why? Because he had a dream and he didn't know what, it, he didn't know what that dream meant. Sometimes God will give you a dream and you don't know what it means. But you hang out with the Holy Ghost long enough, he'll reveal that dream to you. And look, it says, it says, then the astrologers answered the king in Aramaic. Long live the king. Tell us the dream and we will tell you what it means. Come on, somebody say fake. Yeah, yeah, look. It says, but the king said to the astrologers, man, listen, I'm serious about this, man. If you don't tell me what my dream was and what it means, you will be torn limb from limb. And your houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. But if you tell me what I dreamed and what the dream means, I will give you many wonders. Many wonderful things, many wonderful gifts and honors. Just tell me the what? Dream. I wonder, I wonder what would happen if we would have a desire to dream again. Nebuchadnezzar desired to know the dream. What is this dream? And they said again, please, your majesty, tell us the dream, and we will tell you what it means. The king replied, I know what you're doing, knucklehead. <laughs> you're stalling for time because you know I'm a serious 
when I say, if you don't tell me the dream, you are doomed, my friend. So you have conspired to tell me lies, hoping I will change my mind. But tell me the dream, and then I'll know that you can tell me what it means. And the astrologers re replied to the king, no one on earth can tell the king his dream. Nobody, you see, earthly people wouldn't understand what we're talking about. This, this, this message is not for people that, that don't understand spiritual principles. You and I, we, we're a different breed. When you have Christ in you, you are to dream the dreams of God. It is not an option. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will dream. But the problem we have is that we have ignored the fact that the Holy Spirit is the dream giver. He is the vision, the Holy Spirit. And so here we think that the astrologers have it all together. They say, man, there's not one person on this earth that can tell you that. Are you crazy? But how many know that God had a man by the name of Daniel? And Daniel was filled with the Holy Spirit. In Old Testament times, God would fill his, his people with the Holy Spirit temporarily for an event, a project, a task. You and I? Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to roll with us 24-7. And look what happens. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 17 through 19, let's look what happened. It says, then Daniel returned to his house because he heard about what happened with Nebuchadnezzar. They called Daniel. Daniel meets with Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar tells Daniel, hey, I hear that you can interpret dreams, man. He's like, yeah, I can. Identity, yeah, I, I, yeah, we can. Authority, yeah, I got the keys to interpret your dream. And so he says, okay, go. And uh, Daniel just said, just give me a moment. I'm going to go pray to my God. Ever say pray to my God. Amen. He says, I'm going to go pray to my God to give me the interpretation of your dream. And he said, okay, go ahead, go and come back and tell me the dream. So he goes to the house and he hangs out with his homies. That's why it's important to hang out with the right people. Okay. He goes out and he hangs out with Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. And he says, and he goes to his house and he explained everything to his friends, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. And he asked them to pray. Ever say, they asked them to pray. Come on, we need to pray again, guys, that the God of heaven, the God of who? Heaven. Would give him what? Mercy. And he wanted God to help him understand the mystery. Everybody say mystery. mystery. Come on, do you know that God has the mystery for your life? But are you hungry to, to seek out the mystery that he has for you? Or are we just too lazy now? We just want God to drop everything on our lap. No. God, God, God wants to reveal his mysteries. And he says, and then that, uh, uh, da, 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 he wanted to, okay, where am I at? Mercy, he wanted God to help him understand the mystery of the king's dream. Then he and his friends wouldn't be killed along with Babylon's other wise men. And during that night, God gave Daniel a vision. And he showed him what the mystery was all about. God wants to reveal his dream and his vision concerning your life. It is crucial. God wants to give you dreams. God wants to give you vision. And he said, and he showed him what the mystery was all about. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. Come on, there's something awesome when you can... Get the dream of your life revealed. And now there's a shout. You know, now every time we get a kid, there's a praise and there's a shout that we bring to heaven. And say, thank you, Father, for four more kids that get their life changed. And they will now begin to dream for their future. Amen? Amen. That's what God wants. So you need to know the dream of your life. Okay, let's close it up. Three things that come to steal your dream. Are you ready? Number one, write these down. Number one, temporary circumstances. Ever say temporary. Everything you go through is temporary. Okay? This is what comes to steal your dream. A temporary circumstance. Do you know that every circumstance has a shelf life? Aren't you glad? Every, every circumstance you're experiencing right now has an expiration date. You just don't know it, but the Holy Spirit can reveal that to you. You can be so consumed with the circumstance or you can be so consumed with the God who can handle your circumstance. And so don't let the present define your future, guys. Don't be the person that says, oh, my God, it's never going to change. No, listen, it's just temporary. Relax. Chillax. It's all going to work out for good because you love God, right? So don't let the present define your future. Don't let the present dictate your future, guys. Everybody goes through a temporary circumstance 
Everybody, nobody gets away from a temporary circumstance. Nobody. We all go through it. But I tell you this, but the circumstance won't kill the dream of God. It won't kill the dream of God. Jesus, remember this, Jesus didn't buy a tomb. He borrowed one. Amen? He didn't go out there looking for, let me go and praise God, I'm going to die. So let me go ahead and buy some real estate and just die in there. No, he just said, hey, can I borrow your tomb? Because I'm not going to need it. It's temporary, man. Because on the third day, I'm coming back up. Huh? So stop buying a tomb. And just borrow it for a minute. <laughs> get in your cave. Cry. Whine. Do whatever you like to do. But on the third day, get up, please. It ain't cute. Right? Number two. Number two. What comes to steal your dream? Divine delays. When dreams are just taking way too long. Right? Have you ever had those, like, you're just like, man, God, God promised me that by this time, by that age, right, by that moonlight, whatever it is, I don't know. But, but there's these divine delays. But remember this. You have to, you, just, just think this. Study the process of the cocoon. If you study the process of the cocoon, what happens to that caterpillar? It has to struggle first. Why? Because the struggle is what forms you. The struggle is what prepares you. The struggle is, is, is so real, but in reality, the struggle right now is preparing you for the thing that you're believing God for. You're, you're probably just not ready. It's a divine delay. Why? Because God's saying, man, if I gave it to you sooner, you'd mess it up. So I'm going to let you struggle a little bit because as you struggle, you're going to begin to form your wings so that you can fly and be a butterfly. God wants us to completely be transformed before we can get to that place of what he wants to do. And that's, that's God. Number three, everybody say false evidence. False evidence. false evidence will come to steal your dream. What do I mean by that? Well, the devil doesn't hate your doctrine once again, right? He doesn't. He hates the fact that you're under the influence. Think about this. Do you guys remember Joseph the dreamer? What happened to Joseph the dreamer? He was hated because he was always dreaming. Man, he had visions. And, and guess what? He was talking about, he was prophesying, yeah, and I'm going to have this, and, and you're all going to bow down. Not very smart, not very wise kid, you know, telling his brothers that you're all going to bow to me. But he was a dreamer. And so what's the false evidence? Well, his father Jacob, okay, when, when his brothers took him away and sold him to be a slave, in order for them to come back to the father and, and kind of, you know, come up with some type of story, they grabbed his, his coat of many colors. And you know what they did? They grabbed his coat and they dipped it in blood. And they had to bring evidence that your son Joseph is dead, but it was false evidence evidence be very careful because the enemy will always bring you false evidence that you're not coming out but you're going you're going to get your victory you know what this this is temporary right now it's false evidence you feel like man i'm never going to grow i'm never going to change i'm never going to obtain no it's false evidence okay the devil loves to dip things and stuff and try to change the color but when god says red he means red amen you're covered by the blood of jesus god doesn't change his mind about the dreams and the visions that he's giving you what god said is what god's going to do and that is his final word amen can we give jesus a big hand clap amen <laughs> but you got to be under the the influence of the holy spirit okay write these down okay so those were the negatives let's give you some positives okay so there there, there are three stages to your dream number one the birth of a dream isn't that wonderful when you first give birth to your child you're just so stoked you're excited then they start getting older and you get ticked at them so there's the birth of a dream, right? You get excited. Oh, my God. It's just like Oaxaca. When we opened the school, it was like, yes, all excited. But then as we started getting into it, oh, my God, we need money. <laughs> right? And then, and then you had parents going cray-cray. Like, we're just trying to help your kids. And one of the dads wanted to come pick a fight with me. 
I'm like, dang, I just want to give your kid an education. What's wrong with you? The birth of a dream is exciting. But look, number two, but then there's a season of the dying of your dream. Where all of a sudden, the thing that you're excited about is dying. Come on, you're dying in joy. You're dying in faith. You're dying in, in belief in the dream that God gave you. You're just, oh, it's, but there's going to be a season of dying. Get over it. The season is coming. It comes. It's a reality. When we opened Elevate Church, I was all excited. Yes, man. And we're just walking. Yeah, we got a church. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. Uh, then we opened it and all hell broke loose. And then I was in that corner uh, bench right here across the street right there. And I just felt like I was losing my mind. I'm like, God, what the heck did I just do to my I brought us out all here to mess it all up. We were good where we were. What was I thinking? I left all my friends. I left my family. I left, I left my paycheck. What the heck was I thinking? All of a sudden, you start looking at the tithes and offerings, and you're counting quarters, nickels, and dimes. You're just like, help us, Jesus. How in the heck are we going to do your vision, God, with quarters, nickels, and dimes? Oh, my. Amen? <laughs> it's so true. And you know why? Because there was the birth of Elevate Church, and then there was the dying of Elevate Church. But number three, come on, then there's the resurrection of the dream again. All of a sudden, people are coming to Christ, right? People's lives are being changed. Come on, people's lives are being transformed. People are coming from the left, the right, the north, the south, the east, and the west. People are coming and they're hearing of a God who is so loving, so gracious. Man, people are bringing their families, their friends. People are coming by the droves. People are driving from, from Victorville to come to Elevate Church, from San Diego to come to Elevate Church. People are driving from all over the place. You have 5,000 people by Monday morning that have already watched our live stream people are hearing the gospel of jesus christ it sounds like jesus right come on he, it was an excitement for god so loved the world that he sent his son then his son come on what happened to his son death burial and resurrection aren't you glad that god had a plan for every dream <laughs> that is the god of victory amen can we give god one more big hand amen if today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.